Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the third class feast of Saint Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, or the Society of Jesus, who was one of the great saints of the Counter-Reformation of the 16th century. Ignatius was born in Spain, born at Loyola. Ignatius initially served in the court of the Catholic King of Spain, and then became a knight in the army. He was wounded at the siege of Pampeluna. During this time, he read some holy books, which included the lives of the saints. He read about the founders, St. Dominic and St. Francis, and in reading their lives, he said, well, why can't I do the same and become a saint myself? And these books inspired him to follow the footsteps of Christ, as well as um, the lives of the saints. The, the reading of the lives of the saints revealed to him that the church militant needed an army of glorious soldiers to fight the forces of Satan who was operating through the unbelievers. And he went to Montserrat, hung up his arms before the Holy Virgin's altar and spent a whole night in prayer. Then entering on his new profession, of holy warfare. He went on to found the Society of Jesus and was the first general of this new spiritual chivalry. And he moved to the attack under the motto, Ad Maiorem Dei Gloriam, which means to the greater glory of God. Ignatius gave aid in increasing the beauty of churches, in teaching catechism, and in fostering attendance at sermons and the reception of the sacraments. He was most zealous for the spread of the Christian religion everywhere and exercised a wonderful power over demons. The austerity of his life was extraordinary and he composed his famous exercises, his spiritual exercises, a wonderful book approved by the Holy See and also um, it's wonderful for its usefulness to everyone. He died at age 65, returning, going to embrace his Lord, whose greater glory he had always sought in all things. He died with the holy name of Jesus on his lips in the year 1556. And Pope Pius XI appointed and declared him the heavenly patron of all spiritual exercises or retreats. In these times, many people seem to be busy. That's the big word you hear today when you ask someone, how are you? How have you been? They say, I'm busy. What are you up to? I'm busy. Everybody seems to be busy and occupied. And we have to be careful that this doesn't jeopardize um, our spiritual life. We need to be able to have time of prayer in our life, to put God first, set aside time for prayer, show God that he is important. And we need to have these moments of silence in our life. There's so much noise in this world. And we have to develop and deepen our interior life. We have to be careful to not fall into this activism and to rely on our own strength, which comes from pride. So let us pray to St. Ignatius to help us find these times of prayer and find some time of retreat, some time of silent prayer, where we, a retreat where we can dedicate more time to silent prayer and recollection and to be with God. We have to be able to push the pause button 
on all of this business. It's clear that if you have responsibilities, it takes time. It will take your time. You have to tend to your duties. And going off to pray is not about neglecting one's duties. You have to fulfill your duties. But we have to be able to know how to set aside time for prayer and to nourish our interior life. Yesterday we spoke about Saint Gabriel the Archangel, the strength of God. We will get strength from a life of prayer, a life of union with God, and the fruitfulness of our activity depends on our union with God, on our interior life. So let us learn how to put God first and to trust in him. Many times we trust in ourselves um, because of a lack of trust in God and we rely upon our own strength. And if we live like this, our spiritual life will be sterile. So let us be careful and let us always safeguard time of prayer and times of silence. Now, without wanting to do it, I've been giving a reflection on the minor orders. I mean, I started by speaking about one and I thought I'd speak about another the other day. So I might as well carry on and conclude by speaking about the acolyte. Um, and I just read part of the prayer that the bishop says um, when the candidates are called forward. The bishop says, it is the duty of the acolyte to carry the candlestick, to light the lights of the church, and to minister wine and water for the Eucharist. Bishop then says, set an example. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And then another prayer, the bishop says, bless these servants of the order of acolyte so that bearing before themselves a visible light in their hands, they may also show forth in their conduct a spiritual light. I mention this because St. Ignatius, we heard how he gave aid in increasing the beauty of churches. Today, many churches are ugly. That's not me lacking any charity um, to the one, who'd, um, the one who designed it. But they are ugly in their design. And some architectures would make one say that it's not worthy to be called a house of God. It's as if it looks more like a spaceship or a basketball arena. We need to return to beauty, objective beauty, not subjective beauty whereby something is objectively ugly, but because the artist has given an explanation and says, well, this is what it's meant to mean. You say, okay, well, it's beautiful because of his explanation. We have to return to beauty, dear brothers and sisters. And let us pray for a return to the beauty of Catholic architecture and to the different forms of art like sacred imagery and also music. We need to have this return to beauty, to objective beauty. This also reflects and radiates the light of God, the arts. And let us pray for a return to Gregorian chart and sacred polyphony in sacred um, music, liturgical music. You know, art and music, I mean, there are different forms of art. Um, painting is one of them and music is another form. They have such an important role to play in evangelizing the culture. They say, there's a saying, tell me what music you listen to and I can tell you um, what person you are. Music has a big impact, and music can um, have an impact on our thoughts and even the way we behave. And what about in church? It has an impact, the type of music um, that we hear in church and also the images we see. So we call upon artists to unite themselves to God, to become traditional. Traditional in the sense that we have received such beautiful art and music, let us um, try to continue this instead of abandoning it and um, embracing this manic and mad, crazy um, forms of art that are coming out today and entering into our church. And we pray to Saint Ignatius who 
wanted these beautiful churches to intercede for our society and make the light of God shine through the arts. You know, there was a time when the Jesuits developed devotion to the heart of St. Joseph. Now is the time for St. Joseph. Now is the time for his most chaste heart. He can help us to conquer the culture. And just as St. Ignatius formed an army of glorious soldiers to fight the forces of Satan, we need an army of the soldiers of St. Joseph, which is none other than the children of Mary and the army of Mary, for the children of Mary um, must belong to St. Joseph as well, for this is very pleasing to the Blessed Virgin Mary that we get to know her spouse and we love him. And this army of St. Joseph will help us to bring the flame of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary into the whole world. St. Ignatius wanted to spread the faith throughout the whole world. Let us spread the light, the flame of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the whole world. So that everything we do, even the breath we take, can be for the greater glory of God. Imagine, everything you do, is for the greater glory of God. Even when you're walking, even when you're breathing, let us pray that we can live like this and give to God these acts of love in every moment. So we pray to Saint Ignatius of Loyola, one of the saints of the Counter-Reformation. We're living in the times where we need a counter-apostasy. Let's hope that God can raise up saints in these times, give us saints in these times of the counter-apostasy who march forward with strength, fortitude, and courage, contributing towards the restoration of the faith. We need a new crusade. We need an army, even if it's a small army, like the army of Gideon, to bring the light of Christ into the world and to make even our churches more beautiful again, even the music we hear beautiful again, even the images we see beautiful again, so that we can take back the culture from the hands of the evil ones. So we pray to Saint Ignatius to help us and to help this army of Saint Joseph in this year dedicated to Saint Joseph so that the light of Christ will shine and let your light shine for the glory of your Father in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.